Welcome to this lesson on the algebraic representation of an ellipse. From the introduction to conic sections lesson, we saw that an ellipse is the shape that results from the intersection of a plane, not parallel to the base, and the cone. Terminology is always a great place to begin a lesson, and that is exactly where we are going to start our discussion of ellipses. We will then look at the format of the equation, demonstrate a few examples, and then end with finding ways to identify an elliptical equation when we see one. An ellipse is, for lack of a better term, an oval or an elongated circle. Each ellipse has two axes. An axis is the line over which half the ellipse can be folded so that both halves coincide. One of these axes in an ellipse is called the major axis, and the other, the minor axis. The major axis is the longest axis in the ellipse, while the minor axis is the shortest. Each ellipse has a center point. The center is the point where the two axes intersect. An ellipse is the set of all coplanar points that are the sum of the distances from two given points called the foci, singular focus. The easiest way to begin our discussion on ellipses is to think about the standard form for the equation. In the equation shown, AB is the center of the ellipse. P is the distance from the center in the x direction, and Q is the distance in the y direction from the center. For the most part, the ellipses you will work with in Algebra 2 will have their center at the origin. Let's look at our first example about the ellipse. What is the center of the ellipse shown? What is P? What is Q? And what would a sketch look like? The center is 2, negative 3. P, the distance in the x direction, is 3. Q, the distance in the y direction from the center, is 6. If you're not sure how I got these values, please stop this lesson and look back to the previous slide. To graph this ellipse, we would start with the center. Count three units in both the positive and negative x direction, and six units in the positive and negative y direction. All that is left to do is sketch the ellipse. As with the other conic sections we have seen, General form is the form of the equation where all the multiplication has been completed and the equation set equal to zero. Let's expand the last equation, the one we just graphed. We would first need to clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by 9 and 36, or 324. Then we would simplify this expression by first raising our binomials to the second power, and then multiplying by the constants using the distributive property. Finally, we would rearrange terms, moving all to the left, and putting them in order of degrees. Or, if we decided to take our standard equation for an ellipse centered at the origin and transform it into general form, we would get an equation where both x squared and y squared have coefficients that are not equal to each other. That is the key to knowing an ellipse when you see one. The pull on the x-squared term is not equal to the pull on the y-squared term. Picture a circle being distorted in one direction more than the other. In this lesson, you are introduced to the terminology associated with ellipses. You are introduced to the format of the standard equation for an ellipse and saw an example. Finally, you are given a hint as to how to identify the equation for an ellipse. Thank you for joining us as we looked at an ellipse. There are four other lessons on conic sections. We hope that to see you in one of those lessons as well.